So welcome back for our final week talking about resilience with the lovely Leela Turner. And um, this week we wanted to do a module on um, the spiritual immune system, which is actually Leela's suggestion. So I don't yet know what she means by that, but um, I, we're going to find out together. So Leela, do you want to um, enlighten us? <laughs> Just, just if you could just enlighten us, that would be great. Yeah. So what do you mean by spiritual immune system? And why did, you, why did you think, oh, yeah, this is something that would be relevant to this topic? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's connected to our ability to have very healing thought. And I've always known as a kid, so my mom grew up giving me homeopathy and herbs, and I always knew there was such thing as immune system. I knew if you put vitamin C in it and you did all these things, or and I knew that if you rested when you were sick, you, you, you know, at some point your body would sort of heal and mend and knit itself back together, although I didn't ever take that advice. Um, but I knew it was true. And the kind of mind that I used kind of up till when I really started looking at, you know, this understanding was I was the equivalent of a sort of, my mind basically was like a sort of stressed out, manic executive that ran around from meeting to meeting, never stopped and was kind of burnt out in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really get the things I was looking for in, in all, all of the things that I, you know, I was, I was looking to feel connected. I was looking to feel happy. I was looking to feel nourished by life. And I was looking, you know, I didn't even know that new thought was available because I'd felt like I had exhausted every single avenue by all of my various thinking, you know, patterns that I had. And what I started to discover, um, you know, the longer I started to listen to less thought, so what started to happen is when I first came across this, I would listen to every single thought that came in and because every single thought looked relevant and respectful. And if it came in, it was a bit like a parking attendant or a policeman or a dentist or a surgeon. I'm like, oh, you seem important. Oh, you're a good point. Oh, good point. And, you know, so I was listening to everything felt like it had an official badge, you know. And so everything I listened to meant that my mind was very, very fatigued and and I was just kind of worn out. So there was not a lot of room for something else, something other, something richer to happen. And when I started, well, the first thing I realized when I kind of learned this understanding, one of the first things I essentially, well, I wouldn't say apply it to, but got visible to me was how much of my thought was kind of mean and rude to me. Um, I would say the most of the kind of the, the, the the, the official with the squeaky, you know, the crinkly coat and the badge that I listened to was you're not quite good enough or you're not, you have, you've forgotten something and what if, you know, it was that kind of. And so about 80% of the thought that I listened to um, had that feeling of, you know, just agitation, worry, what if, oh no, I didn't, oh, I did it wrong, I did it bad, what if, I, you know, it was basically, I was never here. I was either a couple of steps in the future, how terrible it might be, or what an idiot I was 10 minutes ago or two hours ago or two years ago. And so I lived in mental fatigue mm. and I just never got really nourished by life. So I went to Hawaii. I had a beautiful moment in Hawaii sort of by accident, but then I went back thinking that was lovely and went back a number of times and just went back with a speedy mind. So I never got any nourishment but I was looking for nourishment from Hawaii, not from myself. So I didn't know. And as I started to realize, oh, these thoughts that I'm having that I've had forever, like that I remember, have a feeling of critical meanness to them. It's like tasting soup that you taste fine at first, and then you realize, oh, it's gone off. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? When you taste yeah. food and you're like, oh, it's been in the fridge a bit too long. Um, I realized there was an aftertaste to that kind of quality of thinking. And I started to go, ooh, well, if this is what I'm learning is true, and I, is this right after I'd learned that experience, there's more to me, you know, kind of at that conference experience. I was like, what if, like, because I hadn't learned anything at that conference, I realized there, there was more. And so it made sense to see, what if I didn't listen to all of those thoughts? So I stopped listening to the majority of my worried, anxious thinking, I started to go, oh, you have a mean feeling 
So I started to think of my thoughts like that as like, it's like a mean, I don't know if any of you have had a, like a mean best friend that's always a bit mean to you. Yeah. You hang out with them, but they're always a bit like, oh yeah, you don't really look good in that. Or have you, should you really? And you think they're your friend, but they're always a, putting you down a little bit because they want to be a little bit better and a little bit prettier. And like, you know, and I haven't had hardly any in my 48 years, but I have a couple of times and I don't think they were bad. I just think they were insecure of people. But I went along with that and my I listened to the mean best friend in my own mind for a long time. And I was like, what if I don't listen to her? And what happened was, is I started to get quieter. And what I started to discover when I listened to so much less of that thought is I started to get the whole, my whole system just started to calm down. And a bit like if you've been really sick, like I learned years ago that if I'm starting to get like the flu or a cold, if I take even an afternoon or a morning or a day and I rest, usually I stop it in its tracks, which is quite shocking, isn't it? How many of us push through? I started to get more rested in my system. So my whole spiritual biology just got calmer. And what started to happen was, is I started to get what I would call a beautiful immune response to kind of my life. So as opposed to being a fatigued, stressed out, you know, mind that any thought that came in, it was like any cold, you know, some people's immune systems are down, they'll get every cold going, Yeah. right? So instead of getting every single cold going, I would just be like, you know, it would kind of blip from the landscape. It just sort of my immune system, because my mind was rested, would sort of deal with it because I lived in a quieter place. So things would come in and like trigger me for a second, but there was this place that it got met, which was with a lot of richness. It was like richer, clearer, more open thought, more on agenda thought, you know, it was just, it was really, so when things would come in, it would be like having a people at a party where you're all sitting around to dinner and you're really having, you're really in goodwill with each other. And there's like 10 of you around the table and then someone walks in and just starts, gets really catty. And whenever, when you've got most people in the room that are in goodwill, that catty person will generally calm down or leave. Yeah. Right. Do you know what I mean? If they come in and they're just, you know, it's like the feeling of the room sort of takes care of it. In the old days, it's not like that. It's like you've got nine out of 10 people being catty and bitchy and someone comes in and joins them. They're like, yeah, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really bad, isn't it? And that's what our old system was like. Mm. Was just like stressy, anxious, living in a pool of contaminated, stressy, anxious thinking. And then when an anxious thought comes into that, it's welcomed with open arms and really indulged. Well, it's just like, good point. Oh my God, it's just yeah. like another good point. It's like. Yeah. It's like having seven Noel, you know, what's who's a guy from the Britain's Got Talent or whatever? Like, you know, the kind of they always have to have for entertainment system like a mean person. Yeah. But if your head is full of that, any other mean thoughts like, oh, that's a good point. And so there's a there's an ecosystem and a balance in our mind that's really natural. And I started to experience um you know, more like, it's like things started to grow more naturally in my mind without having to look for it. I started to get ideas naturally without having to find clarity. You know, I'm gonna, I just wanna get clarity from a client mind, but then you're, you're a bit tense and you're looking for it and you've got an agenda and you want a specific answer as opposed to like giving much more room for things to grow inside of you. So I started to discover really new feelings when I left myself alone. And that's a really big one. When I left myself alone, and it didn't mean that I had a pristine beige 500 thread count sheets, kind of like, it just was the whole experience of living felt gentler. If anything, that's been the most valuable thing that I've got from the principles isn't amazing insights. It's not, it's not clever ways to do things. It's that feeling of gentleness and connection is the most prized thing that I hold over everything else. Yeah, and what I love what you're saying because it makes me think of, sometimes I think the clients that I see and me can get so short term 
right? So I'm having a panic attack now, how do I fix it? I'm having a low mood right now, how do I get out of it? And, and the feeling I get when you talk is like, we're not talking about the immediate, the next three seconds, we're talking about the, the general feeling you walk about in life with generally, mm. right? And then, and as your understanding grows, that just gets, to my mind, just gets healthier, like imagine this big expanse of your life and just gets healthier and healthier and healthier and healthier. And yes, you'll have blips where your mood falls or yes, you'll have your, you know, your, your anxious bits or you'll get your reactive thinking or whatever, you'll have your dips. And that's like, yeah, you're still going to get a cold every now and again, no matter how good your immune system is. But don't, if you come to me, and I, I remember doing a video on this once saying like, if you come to me and say, ah, oh, I've got a cold, I've got a cold, how do I fix it? How do I fix it? It's like, I've got nothing for you apart from a tissue. So you can wipe up your snot. Mm -hmm. But I can help you learn about the, the immune system such that you get fewer colds. And when you do, you recover from them a lot more quickly because the environment they land in, like you're saying, is calmer. And it just made me think of the, this is a, this is a, this isn't a quick fix. This is a, this is a, this is a long-term sinking deeper and deeper and deeper into how life really works and who we really are into our true nature and living in the feeling of that for the rest of your life mm. there's no rush mm. it's bigger than just the next 10 minutes we, we we're such little busybodies, aren't we <laughs> yeah and we're real we're real no but we're real curtain twitchers of our own experience how about now what about now are you in a nice feeling now do you know what I mean? And so I used to, when I first learned the principles, and I think this is really true, like I got really in this incredible feeling. And then the first time you lose your bleep, you think the principles broke. Yeah. Right. Oh, I broke. I thought it was too good to be true. And I, and I, I, I tensed up around that. And I didn't realize until probably a couple of years, well, no, maybe sooner, but I didn't realize that every gift I got was from having a thought that I could have a new relationship to. So I've heard this about colds that actually colds are incredible for your immune system because it actually runs your it, it it kind of runs your immune system. It's like running, you know, making sure your car runs now and then. Mm. I'm not fixed on this, so don't take this literally. But when I first kind of got really blissed out, and then I had a like, I remember losing my shit. Like I had this tantrum. Probably I would say tantrum because I. I got really pissed about one something that triggered me to do with mess and I'm like, I'm literally like a hurricane and just I don't know, in my, and, and in my head I'm like in the dialogue of that losing it I'm like you idiot the principles broke um, and then part of me you know how I say the question is like where's Wally keeps popping into my head going well, what's about that or how do you feel about losing all your savings or you know what 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 does your daughter actually look like what occurred to me is like oh this is cool you're having a mood and so right in the middle of my, like, literally seeing cows and buildings going in my little hurricane Leela, because I am quite hurricane, in the middle, I didn't realise there's a centre of a storm in every storm, and I really felt it. This is a long time ago. I remember thinking, this is so cool. I can study a storm from the inside. And instead of trying to get out of it, I watched how it worked, and it was really cool. Yeah. I mean, of course, I started to come out of it immediately because I wasn't believing all of the flying cows and buildings and tractors. I was like, whoa, this is interesting. Even coming out of the judgment that I wasn't talking very nicely to who of one of my family members. But I've really realized sometimes I'll be really in a good place and then I'll just get disturbed for a few days. And when I soften to that, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I can learn about that. Yeah. And I just realized, oh, I was so snitty. This is a gift. And I don't believe in this traditional idea that you have to go through a long psychological tunnel of pain to become good at something. I mean, I don't, I just think it's, I get given what I haven't got a more a loving relationship with. So I keep getting given the thoughts that I think are a problem or yeah. I think are coming from outside. And it's like I get given them as an opportunity so that I can come become at peace with all of the parts of me. Yeah. Yeah, no, I see that. I see that there's like some weird intelligence behind the system that that just 
has a conveyor belt of experience so that we can know it more deeply. You know, the, the same thing that's creating the experience, it wants us to know it. It wants us to have a relationship with it. It wants us to know it, know itself. Life wants itself to be known by itself. And so it, it creates these experiences that it conjures up through thought to show us itself, if we're willing to look. We don't, we get caught up in the drama that's happening on the screen instead of taking a look to see what's, what's behind the scenes. What, what's, and we do, we get the same lessons, you know, we get the same, same habitual thoughts, we get the same experiences again and again and again and again. To my mind, until the other side of that is always a deepening of our understanding and a, and a changing of our relationship to the, the apparent thing, but to our, not only to the apparent thing on like a horizontal level, but on a vertical level, you know, a, a changing relationship to our experience of how all life is created. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I mean, I, mean, I ultimately feel like every experience I have so if I take my daughter as an example, where I get the most worried or the most projection or the most agenda, every single time it's an invitation to, it's an invitation to can't become, have, have a deeper knowing about the relationship with myself and be more connected and peaceful with myself. So it's not really fair for me to blame it on her. Yeah. And every thing I've learned, so looking at money, how many of us feel like security comes from if someone, you know, from so many other things, that's really given me a really lovely warm feeling in my tummy about how, how, how light and safe I feel and that it's not connected to that. Yeah. Like I really grew up worrying about money because my mum said, oh, you're so good with money when I would worry. So I was like, okay, great, worry. Yeah. And it's not her fault, you know, and it's really interesting. I was writing something recently and actually this is interesting for the resilience part because when I first got offered a degree, because I was so dyslexic, she said, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should go and do a trade or go into hairdressing or something practical because maybe you can't handle it. At the time, I thought, oh, I just something occurred to me and it came up through me really softly, like a whisper and said, she's wrong, do it anyway. Because before that, I hadn't even questioned. I thought, oh, I'll do a degree and see what happens. There was nothing on it. And then I had a bunch of thinking come in and go, oh, what if she's right? What if I'm, and I made up, what if she's saying I'm stupid? What if I'm not clever? Yeah. Now, at the time, I thought I was resilient in the face of my mum. And it was only writing and I was like, oh, I was resilient in the face of my own insecurity about what my mum said. So I, at the time, had to have, I had intuition that knew it was fine. I had um, insecure thinking that I then had to kind of be strong in the face of because I didn't know it was from me. So I had grit. I did it anyway, even though I was terrified. I wasn't terrified before that. And then suddenly I'm like, what if I fail? What if I look stupid? What if it's so embarrassing they have to ask me to leave? They made a mistake. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought I, I applied grit to my resilience rather than taking the responsibility. It doesn't even if she had called me stupid, that would still come from me. You know, it's what you're saying is so profound for people with anxiety, you're just making me think that they create like have this totally scary situation environment experience right and the only choice they've had up until this point is grit to get through it no wonder they're all exhausted because there's 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 a thing a very real thing and quite often it's got a label and a diagnosis so it must be a thing and plus people talk about it and lots of people have anxiety so it is a thing and it's and it's scary and it's real and panic attacks are horrible because everybody knows that and when I had one, it was a disaster and it was awful, awful, awful. So in the face of this real solid thing called anxiety, I now need to have grit and I either, I either fall flat on my back and I have a lot of judgment about myself for doing that or I fight through and I do it anyway. 
right? If I feel the fear and do it anyway. And what you're, what you're making me think of is, oh my God, when you realize that this is, you don't have to be strong in the face of something that's real and solid and true. I mean, the minute you see that this is made of thought and it's coming from inside of you, you don't need grit anymore. You don't need to fight anymore. As you soften in the face of seeing that it's made of thought, there's no fight anymore. And the fight is what builds anxiety and more anxiety and more anxiety and more tiring and more stressful. And then your psychological immune system is wired up to the max because it's got to fight at any opportunity. You know, it's like it's on red alert the whole time. So any little blip into that is met with a massive wave of reaction. But the seeing that this is not real, the seeing that this, you don't have to be strong in the face of this because it's not made of anything. Mm. Like that allows you to relax. And when you relax, the whole psychological immune system has a chance to reset. Mm. That's so cool. That, that what you were saying with that, that, experience of being told or maybe you can't handle it and then being strong in the face of that challenge is what people with anxiety feel like they're up against all the time and and, and just to add to that I really have I just so much tenderness for myself for my grit I wouldn't take it back I think that's how cool is that because that's what I had at the time yeah Right, you know, is that so when I first learned this understanding and I was learning in a group of students and everyone would speak up in a room. Mm -hmm. And then when I, it was my turn to talk, it was literally physically painful because I blushed so hard. Psychologically, it was so painful for me to speak in a group. Mm -hmm. And Aaron would, he, he would hear my voice a little bit shaky and he'd look over and I was deep red. It just did, it, oh, it, it, and people, you, you know, and, and, I had grit because I kept, I just didn't want to, I'd seen something and this was an area that was really uncomfortable for me. I would have probably rather stand naked in the post office than speak and, you know, do this. Maybe, I don't know. But I did it anyway because I didn't, I, I was working my way towards understanding. All I knew was I didn't want to have my, not live my life because I was anxious. And because it made me uncomfortable. Yeah. And over time it softened. And I just, now you sort of have to shut me up. I mean, I get a little self-conscious, you know, I think sometimes I think, oh, I took up too much space or I'll get self-conscious for a second. But I, I don't see one person as different from five, as 20, as 50. I don't see anything in there. I feel, you know, generally feel quite connected, um, but it's, God bless me for having the grit when I needed it, but it's really lovely to let that go when you don't need it anymore. So it's, that's, that's actually one of the things that's such a huge relief is like, you can just take all that grit in your handbag and throw it out because you don't need it anymore. So cool. Thank you, Leela. I really have enjoyed spending this time shooting oh, yeah. the breeze and exploring and doing this because we don't really get a chance to do this very often. So it's been it's been lovely. Thank you so much for your time. Such a pleasure. It's been lovely to um, chat with you as well. Thank you. Take care.